Good afternoon, guys. We are driving down I-66, not to be confused with Route 66, through Virginia, and we're heading to uh, my cousin's house in Strasburg, Virginia. Uh, it's been a long time since we've uh, I've seen this family member, and we, as a couple, have actually never visited uh, with Cousin Cheryl. So it's a two-hour drive. Uh, we're about an hour and a half into it. Cousin Cheryl's home is rather inland, so we're going to go and visit Monticello and Williamsburg, and then the plan is to hit the uh, Outer Banks of North Carolina. There was a change in our plans. We were going to make like an appendage trip into Tennessee for Nashville and Memphis, and then cut back over the coast, but uh, life and travels being what they are, actually kind of behind schedule so we decided to cut that trip out and focus on uh, working our way down the seaboard. It's sure to be beautiful. Uh, we've done the Outer Banks before uh, but we're going to do them again because we love the place. Uh, South Carolina, the coast of Georgia, it's all going to be a really neat experience. But if anything comes up today we'll be sure to let you know. Good morning from Strasburg, Virginia. Uh, we just had an amazing visit with our cousins and they have a nice little corner of their property here that's gravel. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to change out that heater hose that I am suspicious of causing that uh, odor that we've been dealing with for the past couple weeks. Uh, I have uh, smelt the odor a couple times and then I uh, pop the hood and I'm able to see some seepage there. It's been nothing dramatic, so it's not like I've had to do it, but I did tighten the clamp and uh, that pretty much stopped it, but I know the hose needs to be replaced, so I'm going to take the opportunity while I have this uh, nice chunk of gravel land to replace the heater hoses, or one, and the one I'm looking at is this one here on the top. As you can tell, that one's pretty new. So it's a very simple job, just undo the hose clamp there. And looks like at one time there was a uh, splice put in there. And I'm just gonna put it there. And while I'm in here, I picked up a, a new heater control valve. So we're gonna put that on too. But when I drain the coolant, I wanna capture it. I don't wanna just drain it into a bucket. So I'm going to capture it in a regular old water bottle. And that way, we can reuse the coolant and not be wasteful. I'm all done replacing the heater hose and I also put on a new heater control valve which is the valve that is controlled by vacuum and when it opens via your switch in the dash it sends hot water to the heater core which in the turn gives you heat out vents. So I put one of those on because it was kind of slow to respond and it's like a $12-$15 part and I was in there and I had it why not put it on uh, but the situation was it was uh, slow to respond so I turn it to heat and about five minutes later then we'd get the full heat and then on the flip side I'd switch over to cold for like the air conditioning and it'd take about five minutes for it to finally blow cold air so here's what I did I wasn't really able to do much uh, recording during the process because I had my hands occupied but here is the new heater control valve and then I decided to extend this out just to give myself a little more space to work with. And these little splicers come in very handy. But this hose right here, 
is the one that was leaking and now it's replaced so theoretically uh, knock on wood this should be the last of the heater hose issues on this end don't worry there's still plenty of freaking heater hoses on this thing there's probably about 30 feet of heater hose but that one was the problem at the time and I got it fixed I think right now I am just uh, letting the engine warm up to uh, burp any of the air out of the system and then once the engine warms up we're going to click the heater on to send the coolant through the uh, heater core and then I'll adjust the level as needed and then we're going to be on the road we are back on the move and today's destination is going to be Charlottesville Virginia and we're going to go visit Monticello and take in some of the old colonial stuff but it is a beautiful day here, uh, perfect temperature, probably in the high 50s, low 60s, which is great At for the me. At end of the street, turn left. And navigation is doing its part right now. So we'll keep you updated from the road. from Central Virginia. We have arrived at Monticello and this is Thomas Jefferson's plantation here in uh, the hills between the Shenandoah Valley and uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains, right? So we are going to take a tour here uh, during our lunch break for the day and just check the place out. I guess there's a lot to see. So you start off with a 40 minute tour and then they kind of let you loose to wander around the uh, property. So it should be fun. I've just been given the green light to do a video. Uh, running into a lot of places here on the East Coast that don't allow you to take pictures or video inside the uh, museums or uh, I locations. Under I understand the photos because of the flash. Yeah, the me too. Is not going to do any damage to <laughs> Now, one person told me that some of the stuff is not owned by them, mm -hmm. so that they didn't like have permission to let people video it. Well, this is pretty cool. This is the ice house where they used to store all the ice. Oh my, that's huge. That is really huge. At least there's nice and cool where we go. Yeah, that's not that bad. I've seen worse toilets. So upstairs in the dining room, there's a dumbwaiter, but not for delivery of food. It's for delivery of wine. So I put the bottles in there and go on up. Seriously heavy. It's serious iron.
road heading towards Williamsport. Berg. Berg, sorry, Williamsburg, Virginia. And I've been having a uh, hard time with that one because when we lived in Lock Haven, Pennsylvania, which we were there just recently, Williamsport is right above there, and that's like the home of the Little League Hall of Fame and the Little League World Series. But needless to say, we're heading towards Williamsburg, Virginia, and we're trying to figure out what our next move is. Um, you know, the Thousand Trails is like 50 miles out of there, so that's really not practical. Yeah, options are, you know, going to be limited. Do we park in a uh, Walmart lot? And stay the night there and maybe the uh, tourist district is within bicycle distance who knows but we're still doing our research and I don't quite know where we're gonna sleep tonight aside from we're sleeping back there but where this is parked we still don't know yet